Hello and welcome to Deal Flow, the show where we keep you informed about the latest merger and acquisition trends in Africa and beyond. We talk to investment bankers, financiers and CEOs on the buying trail. I'm Erika van Amarva. Further proof that the financial services space in sub-Saharan Africa is hotly contested is the news of the acquisition by Bob Diamond's Atlas Mara Group of Bank ABC. We look at the merits of the deal with the CEO of Bank ABC, Douglas Munazzi. That's right after the deals of the week with Dumisho. Thanks, Erica. Let's take a look at those deals of the week. The world's two largest cement makers, that's Lafarge and Wholesome, are in advanced talks to merge into a company with a stock market value of over $50 billion in what would be the industry's biggest ever tie-up. And in other mergers and acquisitions, Sun Pharmaceutical Industries has agreed to buy generic drug maker Renbaxi Laboratories for $3.2 billion. Now, the all-share transaction, which will be the biggest pharmaceutical deal in the Asian Pacific region this year will create the world's fifth largest maker of generic drugs. And in Africa, Kenya plans to sell a 51% stake in five sugar millers to strategic investors starting this month as it plans to complete its reforms that are aimed at making its sugar industry more competitive. All well, those are the deals of the week. Back to you. Investment firm Atlas Mara said last week that it was taking a majority stake in Bank ABC, a banking group listed in Botswana and Zimbabwe that offers financial services across Botswana, Mozambique, Tanzania, Zambia and Zimbabwe. In studio with me, Douglas Munazzi, he's CEO of Bank ABC. Welcome, Douglas. Good to speak to you and congratulations on this deal. You've captured the attention of uh, Bob Diamond, the ex-CEO of Barclays Bank. He himself has indicated he's, he's wanting to create this multi-country financial services platform in Africa. He's, he's found you. What is the nature of this partnership? Well, first of all, thanks for having me here, Erica, to speak on behalf of uh, you know, our partners in this transaction. Well, I think, I think the, the attraction uh, that brings both parties together is obviously, as you correctly say, that we are multi-country. Uh, we've actually built a business from the ground up, uh, and Bob is in, in, in our network uh, the capacity to add access to capital, to add liquidity, to add funding, and some global dimension, which we did not have, uh, and hopefully you know, raise the group to the next level. How competitive are you finding the banking space in, in the market where you're operational in Southern Africa? So we, so we know this is where the, it's an appealing sector in the African market. It's, it's exposed to the emerging middle class consumer in Africa. So th you must be attracting a great deal of attention, but it's also tough. You're up against many established players. It is extremely competitive, that, that without a question. Uh, a number of reasons. One is that some of the markets are small. I mean, take Botswana, for example, it's a country of two million people but with very deep financial services. Uh, and therefore, the competitive uh, space is obviously you know, limited by the finite uh, size of the market. Uh, but then again, you go on to you know, other bigger markets. Uh, most of these countries are growing by more than 5% per annum, uh, and they're doubling in size every couple of years. Uh, and therefore, the potential is huge. And therefore, everybody sees the numbers. They look at the numbers, yeah. and the numbers are attractive. And therefore, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, attention. Uh, not only from existing players, but also from new players. I could, you know, add quite a number of countries where you will see that, you know, there have been a total three new entrants in e each one of these markets. And clearly you have to, to differentiate, and that's how you survive. Yes. Now you use the word potential, and this seems to be a common theme. Um, as Almost as it was with China some years ago, investors from the outside seeing the opportunity, the growth, the, the trajectory going forwards. But presumably at this stage, it, it still is pretty difficult and challenging to service the market. If I look at your offering, you, you, you offer the whole gamut of financial services from retail, SME, uh, business, institutional, asset management, stockbroking. So you refer to the depth of the market not necessarily always being there. So surely that implies that it can be quite pricey. So servicing those various segments? It, it can, but hopefully technology also helps now, right? So uh, whereas the traditional intermediation uh, role of a bank is a branch, uh, then the ATM, then internet, then mobile. So when you go beyond the branch in terms of the channels, uh, I think technology does allow you to, to service uh, bigger numbers 
uh, and in some cases also allows you to do things that you could never have done during the old days of brick and mortar. The, ad the other aspect that is really important from where you know, we are is that in some cases you may find, for example, one of our uh, you know, differentiators is that we do partner corporates, uh, quasi-government entities and so forth. So although an institution might have about 5,000 or 10,000 employees, your real customer is a corporate. And so that also changes the whole model and the whole offering of, of, of what it is that you are providing as a, as a, as a financial services provider. So, so you refer to employing technology. Is any of this technology coming from your own markets, coming from within Africa? Or are, are these developed market technologies that you're implementing? Well, I think it's a blend, right? So you, you, you would agree that uh, mobile money is far more successful, far much more successful in, in Africa than even in developed markets. Uh, mobile penetration is, uh, in some markets, more than 100%. Botswana is a case in point. Zimbabwe is a case in point. And therefore, all these uh, you know, channels are offering us novel ways of serving our clients that even the, the first world do not, do not, do not have. So you, you, you can transfer money uh, you know, via mobile uh, to remote areas as long as there's a signal in that area. Um, as long as one can get an SMS and has access to, to, to mobile agencies. So, you know, these are all really, you know, novel ways of serving customers, which are very common in Africa now uh, and not really, you know, very popular in, yeah. in the developed markets. But of course, you know, there is the issue of most of the technology that we use uh, being mostly, you know, coming from, from the developed world. Uh, and we are applying that technology to our markets and making them relevant to our markets. What you are highlighting is your understanding of knowledge of your own local markets. So I would imagine it's, it, it is an interesting marriage, bringing in, say, Bob Diamond and his team who, who may not understand the local market. And that's why you're seeing outside investors seeking local joint ventures, local partners, relying on, on, on your established networks. It definitely. I think, I think if you look at the, even the rise, of, rise on debt rate of this transaction, it stems from the fact that You've got a local, multi-country business which is solid, uh, which is reputable, well managed, one managed to international best practice, with a global investor, global player who has got, you know, very deep access to international markets, uh, and of course, you know, uh, you know, the, the the game in banking is about capital and liquidity, and that is the, those are the main, uh, uh, you know, uh, paths that Bob brings, Bob and uh, and Ashish, they bring that in the Atlas Mara uh, equation. That makes this transaction, as you correctly said at the beginning, a very exciting uh, uh, you know, prospect. So that's Ashish Taka that you referred to from the Mara component correct. of Atlas Mara. That is correct. You, you refer to liquidity, and, and I think that leads one on to the regulation is, issue, Basel II and Basel III, um, the requirements on, on banking globally. H how have you seen this sort of changing um, the nature of banking, doing banking in Africa? Is it appropriate, for instance, for African banking? Well, you know, the, the reality is that at some point it, it is all appropriate because, you know, you know the, 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 um, the, uh, what I would say, the evolution of regulation, uh, you know, is, is going to lead us to the same destination. But w what is, what is uh, positive, I think, uh, that most African regulators have adopted is a, is a gradual process of introducing uh, Basel 2 and 3. So you'll find, for example, there are fewer countries that have actually are committed to, to, to Basel II to, uh, you know, regulation uh, you know, in, it, in, its, in its entirety. But uh, others have allowed the institutions, the banking sector, to adopt uh, these rules you know, gradually over an extended period of time. In fact, most of our regulators have, have already indicated they've given us deadlines when they you know, start you know, doing Basel II reporting and so forth. So Basel III is still a few years away, but it's inevitable mm -hmm. because, as you correctly say, uh, Basel uh, III you know, brings in the liquidity component in a very, very strong yeah. way. And would you argue that it does uh, support and encourage a resilient African banking sector, one, one that is renowned globally? Well, I think, I think uh, history has taught us that the, the rules of banking must generally be the same. Yes, you might apply them to different extents, but I think the elements of them uh, must generally be the same. Uh, Basel I was looking at just, you know, you know not all uh, assets are, you know, uh, can be considered to be, have the same, the same risk. Uh, you know, Basel II introduces multiple components of looking at risk and how to, to regulate it. And Basel III, you know, the, imp the major impact is really yeah. liquidity. So all these things are really relevant in, the banking, in a banking environment because the traditional reason 
uh, for banking is you know, intermediation. How do we intermediate? Are we intermediating in a manner that is very uh, good for the system uh, and good for the players? Uh, and ultimately good for the future yes. of the system. I just want to ask you quickly on another regulatory note, um, does this deal fall within the ambit of the Comesa competition authorities? Because we've heard many deal makers in the region referring to the impact of that on deal making, the expense and the delays that it introduces. Did you have to notify this deal? Well, you know, we, 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 it's, uh, the deal is subject to a number of regulations, mm -hmm. you know, mostly, the, you know, our primary regulators, the central banks of Botswana and Zimbabwe, uh, and of course, you know, some of the competition elements of the competition uh, uh, rules as well, uh, indigenization in Zimbabwe. Uh, and of course, you know, all the other central banks, uh, you know, may have a rule or two about, you know, uh, which may impact on, the, on, on this particular transaction. But I think in general, uh, most of the regulators have been extremely welcoming to this transaction. So it's, it's likely to be, you know, very, very well supported so far. Is extremely well supported by the regulators. They haven't signed on the dotted line yet, but the indications are: if you do this, and the next thing, uh, you know, we are delighted that you've done this transaction. So that's very positive. So just uh, to close off with, let's talk about support from your shareholders. So the offer is for fifty-one percent of your business, but Atlas Mara is looking for all of it, all one hundred percent. So how will that unfold? So, so the announcement that uh, you know we made was that. Uh, shareholders representing about 51 percent of the of, of the of the shareholders of bank abc have already indicated that they support the transaction so what is left now is a process also for the shareholders of adc which was the controlling share which is the current controlling shareholder and soon to hopefully if they approve the transaction to to to, uh, to move on to atlas mara so once that process is done there's also going to be a process where the minority shareholders of abc will be offered uh, you know, the same terms that have been offered to all the other existing shareholders. And there, thereafter, uh, uh, the ultimate objective of Atlas Mara is to wholly own uh, Bank ABC and, uh, and grow across Africa. Well, many acronyms, uh, but it's an exciting future ahead for Bank ABC. Thanks for coming and talking to us. Thank you for having me, Erica. And, uh, you know, I'm delighted to have spoken about this transaction today. Thanks. That's uh, Douglas Munazzi. He's the CEO of Bank ABC, who's attracted the attention of Bob Diamond's group, uh, Atlas Morrow. We'll see you again same time next week. From me, Erica van der Marwitz. Goodbye.